guys! In this video, I'm going to go over a method for writing that will hopefully help you organize and write a very strong paragraph. So students often are overwhelmed or frightened or just disinterested in writing because they feel like they don't know what to say. Um, the idea of just writing your own ideas down can be very frightening to people. And so I have a method called teach that I use that can be really helpful because it tells you exactly where things should go in your paragraph. So that's what we're going to go over in this video. All right. So the right stuff, that is what I call this because it's a fun pun. Like you have the right stuff, but it's also writing. So the right stuff. And I have my handy dandy notebook, like um, I'm on Blue's Clues, where I've written down all my writing tips. I'm going to go over it with you. So the first thing you have to know is that when you're sitting down to write something, what you're actually doing is you're teaching, okay? The purpose of writing is to teach your audience. You're trying to teach your audience something. It could be as simple as you're trying to teach your audience the answer to a question. You're trying to persuade them um, that your answer to a question is correct. Or maybe you're trying to entertain them. But no matter which... Um, purpose you're using, you're teaching, you are enlightening, you are trying to get your audience to understand your point of view on something. So no matter what you're doing when you're writing, you're actually teaching. So we can also use TEACH as an acronym. So an acronym is when you take the letters of a word and you make them each stand for something. So I'm going to use teach to break down the steps of writing for you. So T will stand for the first part, E will stand for the second part, A for the next part, and CH for the fourth. So I'm going to give you four steps for um, how to structure a paragraph and teach will help us remember. So we can use teach as an acronym to learn or remember the structure of a paragraph. So if you feel like you're a strong writer, this will just help review for you um, and maybe help you remember something that you sometimes forget. And if writing is uncomfortable to you, then this will hopefully help you feel more comfortable. So let's start with the first step of writing a paragraph. That's the T, T for teach. And the T stands for topic sentence and transition word. So your paragraph should always start with a topic sentence. What is a topic sentence? Well, it is a sentence that basically gives an overview of what your paragraph is about to be on. Now, when we are in high school, as we all are now, we want to move away from saying stuff like, in this paragraph I will write, or in this essay I will explain. Um, because you want to explain or inform more subtly. You want to be more implicit. Like, explicit is when you specifically state something, I am going to tell you this, implicit is when you just tell someone. And it's more sophisticated, more mature to just do it without saying what you're doing. So in high school, we avoid phrases like, I will write about. So for example, today you're going to write a paragraph about how Odysseus is a good leader. You might want to start by saying, in this paragraph, I will discuss why Odysseus is a good leader. Let's stop and think about that. Did you tell me anything about why Odysseus is a good leader in that sentence? No, you didn't really tell me anything, okay? So that sentence didn't teach me really much at all. So what you would want to say instead would be like, Odysseus is a good leader because he is smart and brave. So in the second example, Odysseus is a good leader because he is smart and brave. You've taught me. You've taught me two of his traits um, that make him a good leader. So that is a better way to write a sentence um, by just doing what you're going to do instead of telling me what you're going to do. Okay. So a big rule for writing is don't tell me what you're going to do. Just do it. Okay. The other thing that T stands for is transitions. And transition words show the connections between ideas. So the easiest way to get used to transitions is just to have a list of good transition words. So I'll be putting one together and I will post it in classroom under writing center. 
so that you can um, have them to go back to. Just remember that when you start a paragraph, you should have a transition. And when you shift between big ideas, you should have a transition. So the T and teach stood for topic sentence and transition word. So your first sentence will be the T. The second sentence of your paragraph will be your E, your evidence. Evidence is the proof you need to support your topic sentence. So my topic sentence is that Odysseus is a good leader because he's smart and brave. So now I have to give evidence for that. How do I know Odysseus is smart and brave? So in an English class, your evidence will usually be a quote from a source, which will be whatever you're reading, but it can also be a paraphrase. And so for this paragraph about the Odyssey, you can paraphrase. What I mean is you don't have to go to the text and copy it word for word. You can just describe something Odysseus does for your evidence. And to paraphrase, me, paraphrase means to restate in your own words. So what I don't want you doing is just like searching what something Odysseus did that was smart and copying and pasting. You should have enough ideas in your brain, or if not, you can go back to the virtual text. What are some of the things Odysseus did that support your characterization of him? All right, so for example, my topic sentence being Odysseus is a good leader because he's brave and smart. My evidence is Odysseus demonstrated bravery and intelligence when he boldly entered the Cyclops' cave and then had to design a plan to escape. So this part, I'm describing or paraphrasing something that happened in the story when Odysseus went to the Cyclops' cave and entered it. So that's E for evidence. The third part of writing is A, analysis. Now, analysis can kind of frighten students because they're like, oh, what does that mean? That sounds serious. It is, but it's really just a fancy word that means to explain something in your own words. So when I ask you to analyze something, I'm asking you to explain to me in your own words what this means, to break it down for me. Tell me what you think it means. So there's some opinion involved in this. Um, and it's different from paraphrasing because when you paraphrase, you're explaining someone else's ideas. Over here, when I said Odysseus boldly entered the Cyclops' cave, I was, I was explaining what happened in the Odyssey. When I analyze, I'm explaining my own ideas in my own words. So the analysis is the most important part of your paragraph because it's the most unique. It is the part that comes from you. It's the part that can't be Googled. It is your explanation. And a lot of times people get afraid because they're like, well, what if my explanation is not right? As long as you explain things thoroughly, okay, then you're analyzing. I might not agree with your analysis, but that doesn't mean you're not doing it right. We don't always have to agree on what things mean. But what I'm asking you to do as a writer is to explain yourself, okay? So let's say that you don't think Odysseus is a good leader. I might have a different opinion than you. But if you're really analyzing and explaining, then at least I can follow your thought. And it doesn't matter if I don't share the same opinion. I can say you wrote a good analysis. All right. So when you analyze, what you should do is explain what your evidence means to you. So, for example, when I said that Odysseus showed bravery and intelligence by entering the Cyclops cave, now I have to explain that because some of you might be thinking um, he showed that he was a fool when he did that. So explain what your evidence means to you and then explain how your evidence supports your topic sentence. So I'm going to explain why he was brave and intelligent. And that automatically explains my topic sentence because I was stating that he was brave and intelligent. See how it's all just flowing together. I'm basically saying the same thing, but I'm saying it in different ways. So my example is entering the Cyclops' cave was brave because it was a risk. And Odysseus is willing to risk his life to help his men. Okay, so I explained the first part. I don't move on yet, though, because I haven't talked about his intelligence. When it was clear that he and his men were in danger, Odysseus came up with a complicated plan to bamboozle the Cyclops. So now I'm talking about his intelligence. So in my analysis, I have explained both parts of my topic sentence how it, he showed he was brave and how he showed he was intelligent, okay? Now, notice that this is opinionated. People could disagree with this and that is okay. All right, and then the last step of our paragraph is the CH and teach. It's when you clinch. So C and H go together to clinch. So to clinch something means to secure it, to tie it up. 
So essentially in your last sentence of your paragraph, you're going to try to secure your point, tie it up, make everything make sense, bring it all together. So your last sentence should clinch your point by tying together everything you have said. It's like a conclusion of your paragraph. So I know many people, when they're writing, they're like, okay, I made my point and they move on. You want to tie it together for your reader so that your reader feels like, okay, I get it. You want to just one more time, just like restate it, tie it all together so that your reader is with you and feels like you did a good job explaining or teaching them. So we're going to finish strong. And here's my example. In summation. Now, I want to point out that in summation is an excellent transitional phrase that tells um, a reader that you are summarizing what you've said and you're coming to an end. You're coming to your point. In summation, Odysseus's bravery and intelligence make him a good leader because while he may occasionally risk his lives and his men's lives, his intelligence saves most of them. There we go. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, I don't agree with this. I can argue this. I see the other side. That's fine. That's great because at least I'm making you think. And like I said, I don't always have to agree with your point, but I've presented a point. And because I've presented a point to you, now you could argue against my point because I've laid out an argument for you. All right. So to wrap all this together, we need to remember that when you're writing, you are actually teaching. And to do that, you start with a topic sentence and a transition word. You give your evidence, which is gonna be in this class, usually from whatever you're reading, a quote or a paraphrase. You give your analysis. Now, I made this a pyramid because it's the strongest part of your essay. This is your explanation of your evidence and your topic sentence. This is where you need to be really strong and um, you need to elaborate. And then you clinch, you tie it all together. All right, so we're gonna be practicing writing using the teach method this week. I hope that it helps you. I hope that it helps you feel like you know exactly what should go where in your paragraph. I'm excited to see and read what you write.